on the duality side, not using duality as an excuse. Right? When you walk through, what is happiness? What does Mr. Campbell mean by following your bliss? Does that mean following your bliss? James is an artist. He's a very good artist. I like his stuff. All right? It says something. He's got to quit his job. He's got to live on the streets. And he's got to sell his painting. Because that's his bliss. That's what he wants to do. And maybe he'll make millions selling his painting if somebody comes and shoots him in the head and then the paintings become famous. <laughs> right? There's a plan that you guys may want to work out with that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? My point is, it's like, what did Mr. Campbell mean by Father Bliss? What does the, the Buddha mean or any philosophy mean by in joyful participation with the sorrows of the world? It means follow your passions. We need to put passion into what we do, no matter what it may be. You have to pursue what you believe in. Now you also have to be willing to enter into those rooms that are going to be scary. Because your thoughts, your ideas, your values, your views of where you're going may change on that path. But you have to do what you do with passion. You have to believe in what you're doing and you have to follow through with it. You create your mythology. You create who you are. You open up your own destiny. That is steady happiness. Happiness, I think we all can see from the discussions that we had, is very short-lived, especially socially. And where James pointed out, and everybody else came into understanding, that happiness of jumping out of a plane is really not happiness. It's like... I'm happy at that moment, I'm excited, it connects to emotions and the emotions that you feel. But if you really want to discover happiness, you have to follow what you're passionate about. And you have to do it with some sort of center and finding that center. And that passion has to be self-developing. This is the key. Passion does not mean that I'm passionate about going and fighting, uh, fighting at creating a new terrorist group that is going to, you know, if you die, you go to this, you do that. It's not about having people follow. It's about being a follower within yourself. It means self-passion. You know, creating yourself, understanding who you are. That's true steady happiness. No matter what happens in your life, if you have that, you really have something. All the other happiness is just short-lived. And when that old man came up to me, it really keyed a thought. I, my heart broke. And I'm a tough guy. But my heart broke when he said that because there was absolutely nothing I could do. And I was stuck at work. I couldn't even walk out with the guy and see him and talk to him. I had to stay at my job because I had bread in the oven. <laughs> Can't have the bread burn. <laughs> but yet this guy could go out and hit a tree and die. It was terrible. It was a terrible position to be in. And it's at that point I decided there's no real philosophy out there. We all want to hit the bullet marks. We all want to hit the check marks. Even if, if I was going to teach philosophy at a company, the companies want you to hit targets. They want this target. We just had a discussion on it. They want this target. They want that target. Nothing about individuality, about a person just feeling good about where they are. We have to hit targets. Everything becomes aesthetic, a form of false happiness. That it doesn't last. Steadiness is your passion and staying true to your passion. Steadiness means those dots are going to change as well. Be willing to see the changes in your dots. Now, Joe had those dots of two different pictures, they kind of got to intertwine. They got to move into one another. Then everything starts to change. So true happiness is following your passion, internal passion. And then if you can live that passion and express that passion, then you're doing something. Whether you're the best bike rider in the world, whether you're trying to run a philosophy class or talk to people, wherever you are, you are. So nobody loses their drive. If James wants to invent a new computer and Darth wants to invent a new bomb, 
right? And he invents a bomb that can kill 50 billion people, and he invents a computer that goes deep. <laughs> <laughs> my, pet, my, my pet rock, right? Right? All of these, all of these things. The drive has to be there. You have to find, guys, what you're passionate about. James has his art, and when he does his art, I think it's very, very good. But that passion can be sucked out of him. Because now he's married. Next he's got to have kids. Now he has to work. He has to find a job. He has to do this. And slowly the artwork gets further and further on hold. The thing that he started out with, the thing that he had passion with, starts to go. Starts to leave. And if he lets go of that, then he lets go of his passion, his drive. So there's an internal, inside happiness, understanding what you're developing. That you are a vessel traveling through time, and what you do with that vessel is truly important. You are only borrowing this. This body is the last thing you are going to give up. Your breath is the most important thing that you own. And once that goes, then who knows? Your passions are your happiness, what you're following. You will have happiness in buying a new iPhone, or buying a computer, or going out and buying a, a Lexus, or new shoes, cowboy boots. Right? But that is just experiences in the motion throughout your time. You have to have what it takes to be in that joyful participation with the sufferings of the world. You have to be willing to enter those rooms and not see them as positive and negative but just simply entering into a room. That's the experience of life. Your passions, you need to figure out what you're passionate about and follow it. Believe in it and not let it go. If your passion truly changes on the journey you're on, then it will be replaced by something else that you're passionate about. But usually they don't. 